Greetings gamers, this is Rad with Arcade 816. I'm here live, almost live, at the Yeti Station in Aurora, Illinois, downtown Aurora. And it's time for another Tuesday trade-in. That's, uh, you know what it is, we trade the games out, trade the old games out for some new old games, or sometimes some new new games. Uh, some stuff you haven't seen before, we'll see what happens. I'm here with uh, my pal Jason Headland. Uh, he's, uh, what, do you, what do you do here again? Kind of a little bit of everything. I fix the games. I do day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, sometimes I'm running the counter, usually on Saturdays. But you know, fill in all the little little job roles. It's good, man. And uh, Yeti Station, doing everything going well, doing great here. Or what? Yeah, I mean, honestly, for the few couple of months we've been open, we've had a lot of people come out. We've had good praise. I mean, yeah, the location's a little small because it's not our final location, but. I mean, we're still gunning for that bigger location that's just right around the corner. We've got a lot more games to add, a lot more projects in the works, hopefully some more Arcade 816 cabinets. Um, but yeah, no, things are good. You know, I mean, I, things could be better, but things are good. And they're getting even better as it goes along, so. That's awesome, dude. And yeah, yeah literally, like, right around the corner, the, the, the new location. You're here, you walk around the other side of the building, same building right around the corner. That's where they're going to end up at. So, you know, once you guys do move, I think it'll be pretty easy. And plus, you're going to still have this space, so you'll be able to put a sign up that says walk around the corner, and hopefully it'll, you know, people will figure it out. It's it's going to be a good move. It's going to be the, – the place is huge, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's – I mean, it's like triple the size of here. So, we'll, I mean, we have about 40 games in here now, so expect somewhere around 100 in there. You know, bigger games. Like, we can only fit so many things through that tiny door in the front. So, like, we'll have drivers and shooters and more rhythm games and all that sort of thing. More pins, of course, too. Very cool. So, Yeti Station, man. Stay tuned. A lot more to come. But, I mean, just the way it is. It's it's very cool. It's, uh, just, every, like, the, the, the paint, the layout, the art. I mean, the, this place is built by artists. There's just a lot of cool stuff to look at in here besides the games and everything it's uh, yeah, like you say it's small but it's it's, it's awesome homey. dude it, it's it's homey you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly uh and yes like you say more uh, arcade 816 cabs i mean eventually we'll have our own space but for now we appreciate guys like uh jeremy and paul and terry and jason and mike letting us keep the cabinets here it's awesome man and uh yeah there's going to be announcements coming about that too soon uh you know like you say more 816 there will be more 816 cabinets more built and maybe even sold. Who knows? It's all coming down the pipe. It's going to happen. Just got to stay patient, wait and see. You know, it's it's, it's going to be good, dude. But we're here for the Tuesday trade-in. So let's talk about that. We've got the Sega Genesis, which also supports the Sega CD and 32X. Uh, very soon, uh, we just uh, we worked on this a little bit today where we're going to try and clear out the space down below where we've got the, the Sega Genesis cabinet was our very first prototype. And when we put that together, we had like the little cartridge display. I'm sure you've seen it before. We've had this cabinet the longest. So if you haven't seen it, you know, there are pictures of it everywhere. But uh, in any case, we have this cartridge space and it's gorgeous. It's built by uh, Team 816's Olaf. He did a great job on it. But we want to open up that space so we can have it like our other cabinets where we've got all kinds of swag down there and also be able to fit systems in there. So once we open up the space, we'll be able to put in the uh, Sega Genesis, the Sega CD, you know, and the 32X will have the Tower of Power, and we'll actually have working 32X games. I would love to do. What are some good 32X games? I'd love to see uh, NBA Jam is an awesome one. Afterburner's good. Star Wars Arcade is really good. Uh, I mean, Knuckles Chaotix is good. Um, I mean, there's a few of those, like, unreleased games. Like, there was a, it's like a hamster game. God, I forget what it's called. That's hilarious. That'd be cool. You know what I mean? Like, how many people have even played that game versus playing it in an arcade cabinet? So, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, um, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, you have the Virtual Racing 32X version. Um, yeah, there's there's a few. I mean, Spider-Man, yeah. Web of Fire. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. There's not a ton of games for that system, but the ones that are there, uh, Virtual Fighter. Yeah. Real good Virtual Fighter. It's, yeah, really good version. Like, miles above the... Virtual Fighter 2 that came out for Sega Genesis. I mean, that's basically 2D. You know, the Virtual Fighter for 32X. So, you know, the point is, we, we don't have enough space down here, necessarily. <laughs> you know, I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to fit a Tower of Power in here, but if we open up the bottom, you know, you'll be able to fit a lot more. So, yeah, I'd love to see some 32X games, and of course, we'll be rolling more Sega CD and uh, more just Genesis stuff, too. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in line with that, uh, what do we have uh, for, the, for the Sega Genesis, Jason? 
We have Strider. But it's not any old Strider. It's for the uh, the Sega CD. And I think you could probably tell a little bit better, like, as in, like, what are the additions to it? Because I'm going to be honest, I'm a little clueless. Oh, okay. Well, it's easy. Uh, this is Strider. This is the Sega Genesis version of Strider. It never came out for Sega CD, okay? It came out for Genesis. Now, the Genesis port of Strider is actually a, a really good port. I, I think it's really, it's great, dude. And uh, what, uh, you know, the, our beloved hacking community uh, made it so that it's got CD quality music in the Sega Genesis version. So it's kind of like, we, we like to play pretend a lot at Arcade 816. We pretend that Strider came out and, and a while back we ran Streets of Rage 2 CD, you know. They never really came out, but we make cases and we pretend that they came out because we would love it. They would have blown our minds if, we, if they came out like this back then. So, you know, we make it happen because it's fun for us and we hope it's fun for you too. But Strider with the uh, CD soundtrack taken from uh, the uh, uh, TurboGrafx CD version. Oh, okay. So it's the TurboGrafx CD's uh, sound. It's it was the uh, was it the arcade card or was it just the 3.0 card? I I, it was the card. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was pr it's pretty you know, yeah. it was pretty good version on TurboGrafx too. But TurboGrafx CD version arcade had the CD music. Somebody just ripped that music out and put it on here, and now you can pretend it came out on Sega CD, which is we're what we're going to do this week at Yeti Station, only at Yeti Station. I guarantee. Nobody else on Earth is running Strider CD because it doesn't exist. We put it together. Well, we didn't put it together. We put it, uh, you know, we 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 put it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hacking community put it together. But that's it. Strider for Sega CD. I think you're going to love it. Speakers are always turned up loud here. You're going to love the music. And the Genesis version is just a really good version. So, yeah, Strider CD. Awesome. What's next? We also have Game Boy running Donkey Kong 94 on there. We're going to upgrade to uh, uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong. So pretty much, I mean, the spiritual successor to Donkey Kong 94. So, I mean, what can be said about Mario versus Donkey Kong? I mean, it's just one of those cool, like, I mean, is it, is it would you say it's like a, it's in the same series as just Donkey Kong in a, in a nutshell, you know what I mean? I'd call it a puzzler. I, I think it's a puzzle game. It's a puzzler. That's a great way of putting it. So, I mean, you know, you got the little toy Marios. You're trying to get through the level. I mean, what else can be said? Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of platformer, but it's very small levels. Yeah. They're like one or two screens wide, and it's just basically a puzzle. You're figuring out how to get Mario from point A to point B. That's it. And so you, uh, you have to grab keys, chase Donkey Kong into the next level. It's, oh, my God, it's so fun, man. I remember when I first played it, I'm like, Mario versus Donkey Kong, like, didn't we already... Have we already done that back in late 80s, you know? But no, man, it's it's like a completely new game. Uh, levels are small in the vein of Donkey Kong, but there's a lot more to it than that. There's a puzzle element. There's a platform element. There's moves. It's very good about kind of tutorialing you the, you know, well, here's what you got to do in this level. Yeah. Here's it. So, you know, easy to pick up and play. Good for kids. It's, it's, it's fantastic, dude. Yeah, it's nowhere, like, as difficult as I would say, like, the arcade game is. You know what I mean? It slowly progresses you into like okay this is what you're doing at first and then we're adding you know add some more elements and some traps and some more enemies that sort of thing so it does a good job at like kind of not holding your hand but gauging the difficulty up as you go right yeah and it's like like I said, good for kids nothing as like you said and nothing as tough as the old uh, donkey kong that's a tough game unless you watch billy mitchell play it then it looks easy <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh, it's fantastic and basically like this version was basically that in the later levels. This is kind of like you said, it's an evolution of this, right. you know, for Game Boy Advance and, you know, a lot more colorful, a lot more in-depth and, uh, yeah, great, great game. So, unfortunately, going to be saying goodbye to uh, Donkey Kong 94, but, uh, heck, man, this is almost the same, you know, I think it's, it's a good... It's, it's an upgrade. I would say it's an upgrade, yeah. So, um, and um, we're going to be saying goodbye to Lords of Thunder. That's a bummer. I know. Nobody wants to say goodbye to Lords of Thunder, but I think Strider is a good trade-in for, for Strider for Sega CD. I, you've never played that. Who's played that? No one's played that, unless you're like a hacker or something. Yeah, I don't you're know. The guy who made the game, you know, or made the hack, I should say. And, and like a few people who know what they're doing, but you know, you don't have to know what you're doing. That's what we're for. We do this stuff. We research it all and we put it together, and then you get to play it here at Yeti Station. Only at Yeti Station. This is the only place you're going to see them for two weeks. And then they're gone. So come in and check them out, man. It's going to be awesome. Any uh, parting words? No, just come in, have some fun, check out the cabinets, appreciate them while these two games are running for the next week, and uh, 
stay tuned for the next uh, Tuesday trade-in. Yeah, good deal, man. So uh, take care, man. Thanks for tuning in. Have fun, and we'll catch you next time.